Welcome back. Listen Up has been tackling a question we get here often. Where is God when children go hungry because of poverty? Our answer is God is urging us to think and act better on it, and today we're showing you successful solutions to poverty alleviation. One has been microcredit, the powerful practice of giving tiny loans to the poor. Here's what Opportunity International's Mark Lutz, author of the new book, Unpoverty, Rich Lessons from the Working Poor, says about it. Microfinance alone is not going to be the solution, but it is going to be center stage in ending poverty. Because when you empower the poor, rather than giving them a handout, the poor come up and they will climb this ladder out of this pit in which they were born, through no fault of their own, and they will bring the poor with them. Further on this look into alleviating poverty, Listen Up is delighted to welcome one of our friends that we endorse, Opportunity International. It's a microcredit response of God's love. And President Paula Curtis, welcome. Thank you. You know, everyone has to decide sometime, Paula, whether they're going to get involved in caring for poverty or not. When you decided to actually enter this as your full-time work, where were you at at that point in your life? When I first heard the story of opportunity, I had uh, been a single mom. I had been working in philanthropy for about 20 years, raising money for hospitals and universities. And I had questioned for quite some time, I wonder how I could use all the experiences that I've had more directly in service to uh, really serving the poor. And when I heard the story of our client at Opportunity, I thought, oh my goodness, it's my story. The only thing that separates my story from hers was geography. A couple of years later, here you are leading the organization as president. Tell us about the journey God had you on to take you from aha to now, you know, you've got many thousands hoping and counting on you, Paula. Well, I actually applied to Opportunity about six years ago, and I came in number two. <laughs> and uh, the gentleman, uh, Gary Walsh, uh, who led the organization, really readied it for such a day as this. I really feel that God had prepared me over the last five years serving with the Navigators of Canada, uh, serving with a variety of other not-for-profits in the Christian uh, community. And I think all of those years readied me for such a time as this to lead the organization. What is it about your desire to follow Jesus that makes you want to help the poor? Well, I like the way that Christ always walked alongside of those that uh, most people would just uh, miss. And yet, the people that I have met on the street and our clients that are so full of dignity and hope and joy and really the clients that we serve are teaching and transforming my life. And that's probably the biggest aha about working and serving with opportunity is that our lives in Canada are transformed through the supporting and the working with the clients who we feel we're giving a hand up but in actual fact, we're just providing them with the rod to do the fishing. You, um, you talked about you admired the way Jesus walked. Mm. Were you always someone who wanted to walk the way Jesus walked? Well, wanting and doing is two different things. I, I think the humility of recognizing that my frailties. When I was at university, I was studying risk and experiential education and what I chose to do was to live on the streets for three nights um, to experience what it must feel like, the rejection, um, very, very much so the fear of mankind. And what I recognized that often as a, as a Canadian, as a young woman growing up and now as a mother of children, grandchildren, I feared poverty. I feared the face of poverty. And I'm just wondering if there are other Canadians as well who fear the face of poverty. And I didn't really think one person could make a difference, even though I used to work for the Terry Fox Foundation. And I know one person makes a difference. And I think what Christ has taught me through my, my, the past two years as well is that individuals are making a difference against all odds. And do you think, rich or poor, we all need the news of Jesus? Well, the, the good news of Jesus is impacting our clients' lives. I mean, the Dalits, the lowest caste in the Indian culture, is, are coming to Christ in droves. And why? It's because he says, I love you just as you come, just the way you are. 
And that really is uh, his love for me in my life is that he has just loved me just the way I am. And 30 years ago when I applied to work for a mission, I was told no because I was a divorced woman. But today, as a remarried mom or woman and a wife, and here I sit before you, the CEO of a mission, uh, God has opened so many doors. And you could do that if you were divorced as well. Yes. I, I got to ask you about your necklace because I know I've been oh, at your shops. Yes. And just quickly show us your necklace and tell us what's it, what it's made out of and who did it. This is actually made out of the paper, the garbage that is found uh, on the ground in Africa. And uh, the women uh, roll the actual the little uh, segments, the little pieces together and form the most beautiful jewelry um, earrings they have as well as the necklaces. Paula yeah. Curtis, thank you very much. You and we'll much. link Opportunity International on our website and I'll talk about our trip that we did together when I on my blog this week. And when we return, where is God when children go to bed hungry? We'll be back with those thoughts in The Wrap. <laughs>